It's on Friday Football Fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. How's your energy, Southern Arizona? It is now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday Football Fever. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Collins. And I'm Ari Alexander. Paul, for many of the teams here in the Old Pueblo, the 10th game of the season, some of the 9th, the only undefeated team, Southern Arizona, the Sal Point Catholic High School Lancers at 8-0. Moving for 9-0 tonight. And hey, time flies during high school football season, especially when it began in mid-August. Sal Point's been banged up this season, but has still come through. And tonight, taking on a coaching legend and Jeff Skurin and Catalina Foothills, no easy victory, that's for sure. More on that matchup in just a bit. But first, let's head on out to our game of the week with the boys from Cochise County, Buena High School, heading to Ironwood Ridge on senior night. And early on, Buena's Giovanni Bourbon will throw an interception with C.J. Mustaine coming up with it. Nice little run back there. And two plays later for Ironwood Ridge, Nathan Grijalva is going to bust in for a touchdown. Then Buena gets the ball and... Giovanni Bourbon is about to hit Mandrell Garrick for the first down. Nice catch. A bit later, Bourbon will hand the ball off to Timothy Jones. And Timothy Jones will rumble his way for a first down for the boys from Sierra Vista. And on the next play, it will be a pitch to Kay Bryant. Not Kobe Bryant, but Caleb Bryant. He is scoring like Kobe, but in this case, it's a touchdown. In the end, the boys from Ironwood Ridge win by 11. Hey, it was also senior night at South Point High School. Not only the cheerleaders and band members were honored, but also the football players were walked onto the field with the proud parents and gotta love it. Once the game started, Catalina Foothills pushed the ball up and that was Isaiah Bay with a nice little gain. And then Joaquin Holm will get the ball to Dominic Bynum, who will power his way for the first down for Catalina Foothills. But a play later, how about Luke Mitchell not being able to handle the exchange from the quarterback and fumble. Christian Rawls recovers for South Point. The Lancers are definitely in business. And then, like clockwork, Devin Green will find the man they affectionately call El Jukebox. Mario Padilla with the touchdown catch. South Point leads 7-0. The Lancers win 42-14. The Lancers remain unbeaten and will gun for a 10-0 regular season next week. Moving on from mid-down to the south side, just north of Valencia, where Desert View was uh, hoping for a big upset over the sizzling hot Mountain View Mountain Lions. Let's head on over to Ari Alexander. Well, thanks, Polster. It was a difficult start to the season for Mountain View High School. The boys from Northwest Pima County, they started 0-5, albeit difficult schedule. But since then, in league play, they've reeled off a one, a two, a three victories in a row, and a win tonight against Desert View would secure the Mountain Lions a shot at next week's winner-take-all game for the Class 5A Sonoran Region title. Senior night at Jaguar Stadium, but it would be the other view who dominated in this matchup between two schools whose names sound like golf courses. A 14-13 sophomore quarterback, Hayden Parson, the zone read option, touchdown up the middle, and then Desert View looking for something intercepted by Mountain View. Isaiah Sparkman in the right place to give Mountain View a spark. And then Mountain View going deep the first play after the pick. Parson going for Jace Crandall, who torches the defender on the post route. Touchdown Mountain View up 28-13 at that point. They go on to win 38-13. Let's stay on the south side. Brandon Sanders and Pueblo High hosting Rio Rico. And Big Juan Rabago is eaten here against the Rio Rico offense run game. Just crunches their running back. Rio Rico's got a punt. And this one's going to take one bounce. Bobby Jackson, not the former Kings point guard, but he's making moves like a king. Look at that. Skirt. Off to the races, and he is going to beat oh, all of the Rio Rico Hawks to the house. Touchdown Pueblo. They're up 33 to nothing at that point. Rio Rico back on offense, and they are going deep on third down. And Hassan Aiden right there. That's Hassan. Takes the pick, gets hit. No worries. Pueblo ball. They're going to hand it off to Fernando Medina, who's going to weave his way through the defense. Medina in that end zone. They really like that corner pile on there. Pueblo blows out Rio Rico 57 to nothing. Hey, don't look now. Coach Brandon Sanders and Pueblo High School have now busted out with three victories in their last four games. Meanwhile, the Flowing Wells Caballeros, they are gunning for their eighth victory in nine games. Standing in their way tonight, 
a winless squad from Choya that struggled most of the season with low student enrollment when it comes to football and on to the west side where the Caballero fans were pumped up and right off the bat quarterback Zachary Jurado will get it to Isaiah Williams Russell and he is gone. Adios amigo, sayonara, ciao for now. When everything's said and done, Flowing Wells leads 14 to seven and then on defense, Tristan Oatman is coming in strong with the tackle in the backfield. But a few plays later, Troya's quarterback, Malik Martin, is gonna throw it up for grabs. And this ball looks like it might be intercepted, but no, no, no! Patrick Kudos comes down with a catch and he will take it to the house. Choya hanging tough against the mighty Caballeros. After that, the score is tied 14 to 14, but in the end, it was 34-14. At least the last check, the Caballeros winning big. There's a lot of Panther pride and energy tonight at Amphi, starting with the first quarter as they take on Walden Grove. And Hector Najar sees the ball all the way through for the touchdown, putting them up 21 to six. Still in the first quarter, second down and eight, and the Panthers going to fumble. Walden Grove, Evan Kilgore picks it up and runs it back for the touchdown, 35-6, Walden Grove. And then Alex Lopez going deep for his twin brother, Jordan Lopez, going to make the catch. And if you want another, you got to go to Hector Najar. Lopez, all the time in the world to throw. I mean, all of the time in the world to throw. Finally, going for Najar. Walden Grove up 42-6 at that point. Easy victory from the boys all the way down in Sawarita. Hey, thanks a lot, Ari Meister. Well, if you're going to call me Paulster, all right. With a victory, <laughs> the boys from Sawarita have now clinched a 4A Gila region title. It is the first in school history. Congrats to Coach Corey Noble and the Walden Grove football team. Folks, we're far from over with. Coming up after the break, more Friday football fever. We will head to Santa Rita High School. That is where former Sunnyside High School coach Rich Sanchez was gunning for his first win as the skipper at Santa Rita, but Bisbee stood in their way. Let's check some video out. Plus, we'll hear from Sunnyside and U of A running back great David Adams right before highlights for the Sunnyside Miranda game. Don't forget about Sabino and Sawarita as the Friday football fever rolls on. It's on Friday football fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. Hello, I'm David Adams, former U of A Dallas Cowboy, and more importantly, Sunnyside Blue Devil. We're here to watch Friday Football Fever with Paul and Ari. Oh yeah, U of A running back great David Adams, keeping it real, never forgetting his roots at Sunnyside High School. Speaking of Sunnyside, the Blue Devils were hoping to steal a victory on the road in Miranda this evening once again. Welcome back to the Friday Football Fever. I'm Paul Cicala, Ari Alexander standing by. But first, quick reminder, you can see all of the scores for all the big games on our ticker right below. We'll have full rundowns on KVOA.com. But for now, let's get right back into it, shall we? As mentioned, the Blue Devils hit up Morana with the goal of stopping all everything QB, Trenton Borgay. And on the first possession, the Tigers with some trickeration. A direct snap to Zeus Ratliff, who flips it to quarterback Trent Borgay, and then he'll find Ratliff for a 20-yard gain. Borgay is not done, his arm feeling good. He will roll out and then drill Isaiah Roebuck at the one. Morana will later score to make it 6-0. And how about more of the Flying Tigers? Borgay is about to somehow break away from the Sunnyside rush and then he will air it out to Tariq Jordan. And this ends up being a 12-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. More of the Flying Circus after that is little brother freshman Trayson Borgay Back to big brother Trent, and then going deep to Roebuck. 52 yards later, it's 19-3 Tigers. Miranda wins big, 47-17, while putting up lots of points. And from the far reaches of Northwest Pima County, we head to the southeast part of Tucson, where Coach Rich Sanchez was gunning for his first victory with Santa Rita High School. Ari Alexander joins us with more. Yeah, Paul, Coach Rich Sanchez won two state titles as the head of the Sunnyside program, many more as the head of wrestling coach, so he's used to winning. However, it's going to take some time as he rebuilds Santa Rita's football program. Meanwhile, Bisbee two and six on the season. So maybe Santa Rita might have a chance to win the first game. And there is Coach Rich Sanchez on the Santa Rita. That's not Rich Sanchez. I know what Rich Sanchez looks like, and that is not him. 
And we've got Bisbee running the ball. Touchdown from C.J. Sherman for the Pumas. Santa Rita, little pitch here, and that pitch is going to be fumbled. These highlights just getting in for us. And look at Bisbee running it. Sebastian Tramutolo all the way to the house. Touchdown, Bisbee. Costumes are going on here. I, there is Halloween festivities. This is good. Bug Molina, the fumble recovery there. And then Bisbee going deep. That's quarterback RJ Wright to CJ Sherman. If your names are initials, you're going to score a touchdown here. Bisbee, not a whole lot of trouble tonight with Santa Rita. All right, the Sabercats, they are celebrating senior night at Sabino High School while A.J. Skaggs is about to take the snap. And he will throw long for Jimmy Hamilton and Sawaritas defenders get flagged for pass interference. Good news for Sabino, first down. And that sets up a handoff to Daniel McAllister. Touchdown, Sabino. They take the 7-0 lead. And then on the Sawaritas side, Colin Fanning will take the snap and he will hit Emilio Mendes. And then he gets hit. After the catch with Sabino's player targeting. There's a flag, but hey, Mendez still does not go down and he'll get a few extra yards. That, folks, is a first down, plus another 15. After that, the ball goes to Tucker Lennon. You can do it, Tucker. Tucker did it. Touchdown. The extra point was blocked. Score 7 6 at halftime. Final score. Guess who wins? Sabino beats Sawadita 28 14. And now let's get to the Friday Football Fever play of the week. We go back to Choya, where quarterback Malik Martin is going deep. Quarterback thinks he got it. I uh, know. Yes. Patrick Cruz with the catch. That is what we call getting mossed, Paul Sakala. Shout out Randy Moss. Randy Moss, one of the greatest wide receivers to ever do it. And number three, Patrick Cruz is going to absolutely moss this defender. What a throw from Malik Martin. What a catch for Patrick Cruz. The man got lost. Hey, well, I shot that too. That was beautiful to see in person. It's that time of the night though. Hey, it's the time we don't want to have to get to, but time to say goodbye. Good night. All things must come to an end. Paul. They should, but uh, anyway, please watch this show over and over and over again. We'll have it on KVOA.com. Plus tomorrow, Ari will be on at 530 and at 10 with U of A football. Have a good night.